It's okay to sort of uh, be here for another 20, 25 minutes? Yeah. You all awake? Yeah? yeah? <laughs> Great. Uh, first of all, thanks a lot to Mark and the uh, Virtual College for selecting our project as a finalist. And I'm delighted to be here today on behalf of my team. And I would now like to proce uh, proje uh, present Project TESS at Royal Surrey, which stands for Theatre's Equipment Sterilization System. Right page down. And... As Mark introduced me, I'm Tharinder. I'm working in the Royal Surrey Hospital as a change leader. We have a full uh, PMO office, and my role in this project was to facilitate the project as project manager and as the lean expert. Right, uh, during my presentation, uh, I would be covering the following topics. A little bit of background to uh, sterilization in Royal Surrey, the reason for the project, why we did the project, the project approach, which is Dakota, uh, which, which is actually our very own project management methodology at Royal Surrey. Each of the different pro project phases that we went through, the challenges we faced, boy, there were many, and of course the sustained results, and finishing off with some comments from the stakeholders. Okie dokes, a bit of a background. Uh, our main focus was about sterilization of trays used in the theatres. We had 11 main theatres and two day case wards. And for those who have worked in the theatres, you'll be familiar with the those blue wrappers and the sterile uh, trays. Yeah, familiar, at least to some of you guys. And uh, in terms of the volumes, we were using something like 4,000 trays per month. And because it was outsourced to Synergy Healthcare, uh, which is a big private company, as you all know. Uh, we were spending something like £55,000 per month on the service. Uh, these were the main operations that we did, orthopedics, which were really complex and everything, uh, ophthalmic, ENT, MaxFax, and gynae. Uh, yes, it was uh, outsourced to Synergy, and actually the, the unit was located in-house, so we didn't have the the transportation issue issues as such. And also, it was launched under the Royal Surrey Steepot uh, program, which is the, uh, the Productive Operating Theatres. Recent for the project, why did we start this project? Basically, we had long turnaround times, but we were seeing was what gets used today wasn't ready for tomorrow. So that was a big issue. And of course, non-conformities or defects. We had lots of missing instruments from the trays. Sometimes they were mixed in between the trays. And there were also torn or wet wrappers. And that didn't make the staff's life easier. So they had to open more than one tray to do an operation, and which is obviously waste in terms of their time and the effort. And at the end, it was a patient uh, who was sort of suffering. Uh, and there was mistrust and blame culture between Synergy and the theatre staff. They weren't really seeing eye to eye. And because this has been go go going on for a long time, that was a big issue. And also, the, funnily enough, there was some miscommunication or misunderstanding in terms of who was responsible for the supply of steam, which was critical for the autoclaves. And because of that, whenever there was an interruption, Nobody turned up to fix it, so there were long delays, and that was that had a major impact on the turnaround times. And then there was a change in the theatre management, which suddenly brought up all these ish issues. And then at the end, there was this poor theatre's manager who was getting all the complaints, and he wasn't very happy. Uh, these were the simple but challenging project objectives we had provide uh, sterilized instruments to theaters when, when they were needed in correct quantities and uh, without any missing items. Streamline processes, obviously, and with uh, increased traceability and accountability, who is doing what, and of, of course, improved communication. And these were the, the KPIs that we identified. Obviously, the, the turnaround times, for the fast track and <coughs> standard track items, defects, 
uh, spending off-site processing because every time we had disruptions, what sinners used to do was they used to send their kit outside so we got charged something like thousand pounds every month. And of course, uh, staff satisfaction, which is paramount. The approach we used was decoder, which is our own uh, problem solving methodology. It's simple to use. Uh, it basically has six stages or phases, starting off with define where we focus on the team, make sure that they are all aligned to the goals and objectives. Establish is all about finding what's going on at the moment. Create, we test our creativity and problem solving where we try to develop solutions. Organizing is a lot about project planning and again communication. Two is the fun bit where you sort of implement all the changes. Not very fun sometimes. And ENR which is the, uh, the final stage and I think this is one of the most powerful phases because we look back at the project and see what are the lessons learned and can we identify any more improvement opportunities. I'll quickly run through what we did in each of those phases in Define. The main thing we did was we talked to the customer to capture what we call the voice of the, the customer. So I think that enabled us to focus on the main areas where it's going wrong. And we also agreed project objectives and of course the, the KPIs. Established was a lot about GEMBA, <coughs> work in the process. And this was, I think, really uh, important because for the first time, most of the staff saw the whole value stream for the first time. And that actually opened their eyes, oh, there's this much waste going in, in the process. And actually they identified some real quick and easy wins. Uh, create, all about brainstorming and creating solutions. These were some of the, uh, the quick wins that the guys identified. We started, uh, the synergy supervisor started to come up to theater every morning so they, they could discuss the issues then and there. Uh, the sterile store man was given access to the online tracking system that synergy operated so he could actually see actually in which phase the tray was and then he could estimate okay in two hours or three hours time this could be available. We actually arranged cover for the sterile store man because whenever he went on leave, there was no one to cover him. So we trained towards CAs. And of course, we educated staff, especially the theater staff, on how to handle sterile equipment, especially in accordance with the WHO checklist, doing pre and post op checks. Organize, uh, organize again, a lot about planning. Uh, and communication. We actually set up some comms board to make sure that they communicated. Uh, a bit of 5S in the sterile store uh, and we organized a weekly and monthly performance monitoring meet, uh, meetings. Two, it was all fun. Uh, theater sisters were also given access to Trackstar. We actually implemented a new process to handle loan sets which actually cut down the processing time by four hours. The main difference or the main change that we did was rather than the, the third party suppliers getting the or supplying the, uh, the trays to the store man, it was straight away delivered to the unit downstairs to Synergy. So they did all of the checks. Uh, we started weekly and monthly performance monitoring. Uh, we actually arranged an additional collection on Sundays so that enabled all of the trays to be available on Mondays because we didn't have any collections on Sundays, which was a big issue. And of course, we clarified who was responsible for maintenance of steam supply, which was Roll Surrey. Uh, and then Synergy staff was trained on processing complicated sets, especially the uh, orthopedic sets, which I'm sure anyone who's got experience there, they are really, really complicated. Evaluate and refine, we actually had more than one go at this. We t tweaked lots of uh, solutions, and these were the new actions that we implemented. We actually appointed a mentor, which was a senior sister for the sterile snowman. He was a band three, and he wasn't get getting his voice heard 
in the seniors' meeting. So this enabled them, uh, him to have more of a say. We appointed another senior sister from the theatres who was responsible for the non-conformity, so the defect. So she was the one who was mainly taking action on that. And at the end, we actually updated the job description of the uh, sterile st straw man in line with all the new changes that we did. Challenges? Well, it was like going to moon. Uh, this was perceived as something Im impossible because, one, these issues have been there for a long time. Several senior people have attempted, had attempted to solve this, wasn't successful. So when we first started the project, the feedback we got was, no, that you wouldn't get anywhere. Great start. Uh, and then, of course, them versus us, so nothing to do with us. We are all perfect. Everyone's saying that. Management structure and communication, this actually hindered the, uh, the communication process. The best example is all the information to do with the defects. They were only available to the staff something like one month after the event. And it didn't help the, the problem solving and root, root cause analysis at all. Uh, difficulty in getting staff, especially the theatre staff, to meetings because, as you all know, the environment is very busy. You can plan and plan for the meetings, but on the day, either the list is overrunning or they are short of staff, so that was a big issue. And working with an external company, so Synergy, where their interest is not really patient care, but they are, but mainly focused on profit, so that was a difficult situation. So how did we overcome all those challenges, the reasons, and make sustainable improvements? All to do with me? No. <laughs> Not at all. It was decoder, because that gave a very structured and methodological approach to problem solving, which was uh, very easy to follow. Uh, we actually lo uh, used lots of lean tools and techniques at the appropriate stages. Uh, voice of the customers at the very early stages make a uh, sort of focus on the important areas. Kemba, go and see, so that opened the staff's eyes in terms of the value stream, all the waste which was happening. Uh, team approach, because that made them actually own the project. So it was not my project or the, the theater manager's project. It was their project. And of course, the visual management and performance monitoring which ensured the sustainability. And of course, the uh, project governance, because uh, we <coughs> reported this project to our steering group, which was monthly and chaired by the, the CEO himself. Uh, and of course, use of time effectively and efficiently. Rather than going for long meetings, we actually went for lots of one-to-ones, daily huddles, and short meetings. And we used the education half days which was every, held every month to gather everyone together. And at the end, we were pretty happy about that. Yeah, we felt like that. Of course, the, the results, which uh, have been sustainable for now, more than two years, actually. The fast-track turnaround times have come down by something like 40%. The standard-track turnaround has come down by 30%. And the quality of the sterilized sets has actually improved by more than 50%. And of course, the off-site processing cost is now zero. And at the end, you have delighted customers. And these are some of the comments that the end users had to say. Uh, a joint statement was, was issued from Nancy, who's the theater's improvement lead, and actually John who's the, uh, the specialty manager for theatres. He didn't like his picture, picture taken, so he's all right with that. Uh, so what they're basically saying is, uh, as part of a wider theatres improvement program, we launched tests to gain a clear understanding of the issues, uh, whether operational, cultural, logical, or historical. And from our, our perspective, this project has been a terrific su success. The benefits are tangible. Incidents requiring management inve investigation are now a rarity, saving me time. Uh, improved utilization, 
And for the theatre staff, this project has removed an unnecessary stress from the system. This is Richard Gerald. Again, similar comments, I think. What sort of been very powerful to him is that the, the Gemba sessions that we did, which opened their eyes. <coughs> and I think that's it. Uh, thanks for your patience. Hope you learned something new. Mm. Any questions? I was just, I was just um, <coughs> what happened to course? <laughs> I assume all with them, but then um, yeah. in terms of what you were spending, was it difficult the variation in terms of demand? But the actual cost per unit? Yeah, actually, I mean, what has happened over the last two years is we've seen a 10, 10 to 15 percent increase in the theatre's capacity. Mm -hmm. So, actually, the, the current system was actually able to manage that increase in demand. And obviously, if you talk about the cost per unit, the, uh, the fast track uh, costs came down because there weren't that many requests going through. And obviously, the off site spending has now reduced to, to zero. So yes, definitely. Was there any reduced cost to the supplier in terms of the, the commercial company? I, I think it, it's sort of a trade-off between the actual cost and in terms of the additional hours that some of the supervisors were working. Because they used to get lots of uh, around 6, 7 o'clock in the evening. Can I have this instrument ready tomorrow? So they had to keep someone overnight or sort of have overtime. So their overtime uh, pay decreased, but in terms of the total number of uh, income to them, it actually came down a little bit. But they were happy in terms of because it was sort of breaking even. I think you yeah. also look at the increased capacity because yeah. the, the naval that yeah. capacity will keep yeah. the same. So they're doing, you know, so that trade off as well. Yeah. So they're at least 10% more they're doing with the current staff and the current equipment. That's a good one again. We're well, thinking again from the quality perspective, thinking about what the problem to the patient and the delays to the yeah. operations. You know, going through with a robust process, using some of the lean tools, yeah. lots of benefits, and it, it's, it's low cost or no cost. It doesn't cost a lot of money to put this in place, does it? Yeah. Just the will of the uh, staff. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Was there any, um, <coughs> was there any um, audit done in terms of contamination and uh, of trays or, <coughs> or trays that were um, uh, go, go through but are not decontaminated and then would have to go through again because of change in practices? Or no, because actually that improved. What we were getting was lots of uh, the, the wrapping. They were sort of either wet or they were torn. So actually that reduced dramatically. And that was sort of lots of improvement in terms of the turnaround time and obviously the cost. And they were doing lots of checks in terms of the who checklist. To make sure that they are sort of there. Yeah. Did you do any audits around um, cancelled docs and the impact on 18 weeks through not having? Yeah, not specifically, but obviously there would have been an impact. That could be one of the new things that we could look at. I'm just but yeah. From a patient experience. Yes, yes, yes so if you also yeah. Went yeah. Revision yeah. And you, you've yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because we had lots of sort of near misses. Nothing was actually cancelled, any ops but loads of near misses because they would find the instrument somehow rather than uh, cancelling the op. Yeah. Yeah. Any more questions? Anything else? Thank you. Thank you very much.